guys and welcome to Suse. It's a small little beach town on the coast of Tunisia. We got here yesterday but today we're gonna catch a train and we're gonna head out of town and we're gonna go down and check out El Gem. It's the biggest Roman Colosseum in Africa and the second biggest only behind the one in Rome. So that's our adventure for today. We hope you guys come with us. We're about 10 minutes away from catching our train so let's head on into the train station and get going. I want to say that there's so many different options on how you can do this tour so later on we'll tell you all the different options and the route we chose and yeah, why definitely. we think it was the cheapest oh, route. Oh, for sure, yeah, no so. doubt. We'll fill you guys we'll in, in once we hit the train. All right, guys, so here's the train station where we just got off. And if you look over here, there's the uh, El Gem Stadium right there, the Roman Stadium, Coliseum. So that's how close it is if you do this on your own. So getting on and off the train was a little bit of a process there, especially getting on it. It was real pushy shovy, but we heard that was going to be the case when we came, so we were ready for it. And actually, last night we went out to dinner and we found this food stall that we wanted to go to. And the review said, Good things come to those with elbows because there's no lines, there's nothing like that. You just got to shove your way to the front. And that's pretty much how it was. So it's kind of the theme here in Tunis so far. But the people have been really nice. No, you know, no, nobody's really rough or anything like that. It's just fight for your own spot kind of thing. Okay, so like we were telling you guys at the train station before, there's several ways to get here. If you're coming from Tunis, there's a full day tour. And if you're coming from Seuss, there was a half day tour. But these tours were very expensive and they take you to some places that just didn't seem too interesting. We really didn't want to go to the other stops that they made. And to be honest, we really didn't want to sit through a 12 hour tour. So we decided we were going to come down here and do it on our own. The tours, even the half day tour was $60, $70 each. And the full day tours were well over $120 each. So we decided we would do it on our own. Now the train ride to get down here cost us $3 for two people. So it was $1.50 each and the same thing going back, $1.50 each. And then to get in over here is also only $3 a person. So all together, it's going to cost us, um, what's that? $3 and $3, like $6, $7 each for the entire day, as opposed to doing it with a tour. Now you can take a bus down, you can take a train down, or they have something else called lavage, which is a little bit cheaper than the bus even. I think you can get it for even a little bit cheaper. But that is where you go down and you meet like, um, these little minivan type of shuttles that'll take you here. But the problem is, you find the one going to your destination, and then you have to wait there at the stand until it fills up, and that could take a while. So we didn't want to sit around and wait for a van to fill up, and then get in an overpacked van to come down here. So we did the train, and it wasn't too bad. They don't really have much AC on there, but it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. This train was worse than the one we took yesterday, condition-wise. Like yesterday, we had nice seats, and it was comfortable. This one, the seats were all broken, but there's plenty of leg room and space, and it wasn't bad. We definitely saved a shit ton of money today, and we're happy about that. And here we are, we've made it to the Coliseum. All right, look at this, huge. So the first thing I noticed once we're here is that there are a lot of sections missing that came down already. It's in a lot more ruins than the ones in Roma, and there's no renovation going on here at all. I was reading that the government has decided not to do renovations. I don't know what reasoning, but they're just letting it be as is. And it's a shame because this thing is pretty, pretty damn impressive. So you can climb around, you can go on the you know down there in the main area then you can come up each level and I think there's three levels going up and then you can also go underground and I bet you that's where it's nice and cool so we're gonna head there last right now we're gonna climb all the way up top there's no plaques no signs anywhere no guides you know trying to hustle you for a guide which I'm surprised about so 
I guess your options are you can either Google all your information before you come or pay for the tour from you know Tunis for $140 and then I think you might get a guide with that one but there's not many people here it's definitely not crowded at all um, no pushing no lines no shoving we walked right in so easy peasy it's a good respite from the heat too because once you're in here in the shade it's so much cooler than outside and there's a nice breeze in here pretty impressive for not taking care of it i think they, they're wasting a real opportunity here all right you want to head up one more all right guys we made it all the way up to the top here and look at this view you get out across the city here pretty nice now we're taking our time and hanging out in these shady areas just because it's so much cooler up here and we were originally told there was an 11 30 train back so we were going to take that one but when we got here apparently the next train isn't until two o'clock so we've got about four hours to kill up here and we're definitely going to walk through the town and take you guys with us but it's better to hang out up here in the shade right now and cool down a little bit because there's a really nice breeze up here and incredible view and a little people watching completely blown away by how few people there are here if this was Rome we'd have waited outside for like two three hours just to get in on a line and then once we got in it would have been shoulder to shoulder with people but here like I said we were the only person online we walked right in and there's absolutely like a handful of people here that's it all right guys we're underneath now and it is pretty cool down here but it's a little bit on the creepy side like she said, there's no lights. Is an echo. This is where they kept the rancor. This is his pit. The what? <laughs> she said, the what? You could tell she never watches Star Wars. <laughs> That's the beast that Luke had to kill. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is cool. Alright, so we spent about an hour in there and um, we actually just met a couple of guys from the US who are military guys who are staying in Germany. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for your service for sure. And um, we, we talked to them for a little while up there and then we just wandered through. You can walk around for a good, I guess it took us about an hour. We walked around, took our time. There's not, really no plaques, there's nothing to see and do in there. But, um, it's definitely worth seeing. I don't think it's worth paying $140 to come down here and see it. But if you're willing to get on a train and come down and do it like we did for, you know, less than 10 bucks, it's definitely worth coming down and checking out. It's not a full day event. However, there is a museum about two blocks from here that you can go walk through if you wanted to. And that'll give you a little bit more of the history of this place. And it might even be air conditioned. But you know us, we ain't looking for a museum. We're looking for food. So we're gonna go up check out Mr. Camel here and then we're gonna go find us some food so let's walk through the town together and see what we can munch on is that an English muffin? I could do that, I could do that you wanna get a couple of these? what are you in the mood for? I'm just gonna try this thing here alright let's see what they got alright guys we found a snack shop so let us figure out what it is and we'll be right back <laughs> Alright, so here we go guys, we got our meal. I got a chicken shawarma the size of a football, and it is loaded with spices, salad, potatoes, there's uh, cheese and french fries, and all kinds of goodies on top. And Alyssa got herself a tuna chapati, tone chapati, and it's just full of potatoes, spices, tuna, salad, same thing, there's an egg on hers. It smells delicious. Guys, we could have split one of these with like four people. This thing is huge. We have no idea. Look at this thing.
It has two types of potatoes, chopped up boiled potatoes and french fries. So it's a lot of carbs in there, but the chicken is pretty good. The salad tastes great, and uh, the spice is burning. Oh, that's really good. That is hot and spicy. Mm. Like you said, mine was the potato, nice and oily. I got the tuna, I got the egg, a little spicy, not bad. I think this is gonna be an excellent lunch. I guess I'll try his now too. Yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a try. This just fell apart on me. <laughs> Oh, this one's pretty good. It tastes good. I mean, it's a little girly sandwich compared to my monster over there, but this is really good. This is sensible. That is ridiculous. <laughs> and you can see there's so much stuff in there. It's got good flavor, but I'm not in the mood for chicken right now. I'm glad I went tuna. Yeah, that's real good. This might be a problem on the train ride home. We'll see how that goes. But it's absolutely delicious. Thumbs up for the street food in Tunisia. That's one thing I gotta say. Morocco had the tagines and the restaurants were good, but the street Tunisia. food didn't compare. And Morocco yeah. had the fruit. Morocco had the fruit though. Mm -hmm. But Tunisia's got the street food. Their game is way better than Morocco's street food game. So. All right, guys, we'll see you guys when we finish this, if we finish this. That lunch was absolutely delicious. So good. We were just loving the street food here. And El Gem, El Gem is cool. I mean, it's, um, what can I say? It's like the Roman one, but without the crowds. You know, no crowds and no lines here. So I would definitely recommend coming down and doing it. I don't know if I'd have paid $140 each to come down here on a tour bus and do it, but the way we did it, you know, less than 10 bucks. Man, with, with lunch and everything, it's less than $20 for admission and the train ride. So, yeah, that's for two people. So it was definitely worth coming in and doing it. And I'm glad we did. Half day we're making out of it. Now we got a little time to kill before our train, but um, we're just going to hang out. We noticed that once you leave the Coliseum area, the back streets here are just all locals. There's no tourists. They must get on, you know, buses and just go right back afterwards because we haven't seen any tourists outside of there. It's a little hot out, so we found some shade. We found a hookah joint, so we're going to get a big bottle of water, rehydrate, enjoy a hookah, and wait for our train, which is about two hours from now. So we got some time to kill here, and this is the perfect way to do it. I have to mention, this hookah is really cheap for the location that we're in. It's yeah. $2 for the hookah, and this view behind, uh, in front of us. How's that? And to be honest with you guys, the hookah is all over. Tunisia have been relatively cheap, even cheaper than in Morocco. I think we've been paying about $1.50 to $2 for a hookah, and they're, you know, top notch. This is probably the best hookah culture we've ever been to, and we've been to a lot of them. We've done hookahs on the top of the treasury in um, Petra, you know, so I mean, we've done some ep epic hookahs, and this culture here, this is their thing. Everywhere you go, there's hookahs, and the prices are just so ridiculously cheap, and they're top quality. Oh, here he comes. Took a few minutes and it's already on its way. So, very cool. All right, so our train is about an hour late now. We've been standing out here baking in the sun. And it's been pretty entertaining, though. See these guys over here? Well, one of them's throwing firecrackers onto the track. <laughs> and they all befriended us. They've been coming up trying to talk with us. And the Russian guy is deaf, but the firecrackers scared him a little bit. And then some old lady yelled at him, thinking that he threw the firecrackers when it was actually the family that lives here. So, and then a few minutes before that, some guy came up and tried to get Alyssa to go in the bathroom with them. And then and the locals kid, yeah. came along and chased him away after I threatened them. So it's been pretty, uh, pretty interesting, <laughs> interesting hanging out here in El Gem for the afternoon. And that's basically all we've done, because after we did the, the Coliseum, we just hung out and waited, thinking our train was going to be here earlier. So what an adventure. We got to meet a lot of locals and eat some local, local food life. and yeah definitely was more fun than taking your average tour so hopefully we'll get back to Seuss soon though because we wanted to get down to the ocean tonight and show you guys a little bit more of Seuss but yeah. right now we're just waiting on trains so and all these clouds have rolled in I'm really hoping on the ocean front it's not that bad yeah so we'll see yeah. we might make it back <laughs> <laughs> look at them fighting to get on the train right now this is the train we just jumped off of it was madness we had to stand the whole way 
and it was just absolute chaos in there. It was so hot. It had to be over 100 degrees in there. And this is the fight now to get on the train. Woo! Yeah. Madness, guys. Madness. So, don't take a Tunisian train. We got so lucky the first couple we took, but this one was an absolute disaster. An adventure we will not forget. <laughs> And probably will never take again. No, I I'll walk. just now to India train. I, I actually would take an India train over that. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely walk. I'll walk to Tunis before I take another train tomorrow. <laughs> That's it, guys. We made it back to our room. We survived. We're extremely hot, and we're gonna call it a day now. We got one more video coming from Seuss, hopefully later on tonight down by the beach. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss that one. Thanks for watching. Leave us a comment, and we'll see you guys soon.